Hey there, Postal here. Um, so today's video is going to be a little bit different. Yeah, we're going to have some gameplay, uh, and that'll come right after this. But um, first and foremost, I've got a question for you, and I'm hoping you guys can help me out uh, for the future of this particular channel. Uh, but first, this. Alright, so today we're looking at the TA-183 again, um, not because uh, because I forgot anything about it, but because, well, two reasons. A, it's a great plane in my opinion, uh, but B, I'm also kind of running out of lines, right? Um, I'm not good enough at um, ground pounders, and I don't think bombers are um, exciting enough gameplay to post too many videos on. I mean, I could do that in the future. But you'll see the last two uh, items I have here is the I-211, which I will be posting a video on in the future, um, and the TA-183. Other than that, I've just got all the planes I kept that I actually liked. And I'll probably even go back and buy some planes I didn't like just to see if, um, you know, see if there is planes I, I just wasn't good at the game earlier in my career, quote-unquote, um, to play. So my question is, my request is, I suppose, is well what do you guys want to see? Um, for the USA line I've done everything but the bombers. That's going to be a running theme here. Um, so if you guys are, are wanting me to do something um, on any one of these lines I'm happy to go back and buy a plane. Uh, but otherwise you can see what I've got checked off here and I'm, have readily available as far as the American lines is concerned. For the Soviet lines, uh, more of the same, right? I've got the Tier 10 bomber because, you know, Wargaming had that ridiculous uh, sale thing going on. And I'm kind of moving down the ground pounders, but I've got or will have all of the um, fighters and multi-role fighters pretty darn soon. I just need to actually buy the MiG and then research the 215. Uh, for Germany, I've got, again, everything but the bombers and the ground pounders. And the 252, I'm not really excited about that one. But I've got everything else. And uh, much like the Soviet line, I'm kind of meandering down the, um, the ground pounder line. I do need to make more of an effort of going down the bomber line. Uh, but we'll see how that goes. So what do you guys want to see here? Japanese line, I've got them all. I can go back and get um, them if you want me to. Um, the British line, probably my favorite of them, j just by going by what I've kept. Um, I don't think I ever actually played the Hurricane 1, now that I'm looking at it. I think f I went down the Skua and then down the Heavy line. And I, I won the Hurricane 2 when this line first came out. Uh, it was just the, the Hurricane 1, 2, and the Tornado. I won the Hurricane 2, researched the Tornado, and then when these came out, I researched all them. Anyway. Yeah, so what of these planes do you guys want to see more of? Um, you know, you can reach out to me on my Discord page. Uh, you feel free to leave a comment down below. Um, you know, send me an email, however you want to reach out to me. I'm happy to go ahead and, and do that. I've got some premium planes as well. Uh, a lot of them were just kind of free planes. Uh, I call them freemiums that they were giving out when 2.0 came out. Um, so, I mean, I've got a lot of low-tier stuff. I uh, got the XP-55, which I probably should do another video on. I really did like this plane quite a bit. Um, but if, I mean, if you see any premiums here that you're like, oh, you know what, I'm thinking of getting that plane, and you want you want my opinion, oh, you should have gotten this one. I'm just going to say that. Get it. Get it. Got it. Good. Um, but if you see anything here that um, you're like, well, is that a good plane? Um, I got, I got you know, some money burned in a hole in my pocket. Um... If you want me to, you know, give a review of any one of these premium planes that I've got in the, the garage, um, you know, give me a heads up, and I'm I'm happy to go ahead and, and do that as well. What the heck is this plane? I don't think I've ever flown this one. Uh, maybe I should go back and uh, I mean I've got a bunch of premiums that I'm sure I've only flown like half a dozen times, if that. This one I've never flown that I could go back and do reviews on. I guess that'll entertain me as well. Um, at least with the Iron Maiden one, but it's a Spitfire 5. It's not like um, you've never seen a Spitfire 5, right? But anyway, 
I want to make sure I'm producing videos that you guys actually care about and um, you know that you all want to see and oh my German uh, my German premium ground pounder I thought it was kind of funny to change it from French to German anyway um, so give me a heads up on that like I said I'm here for you guys I'm, I'm obviously uh, you know want to entertain myself as well but at the end of the day if you guys don't like what I'm making then I'm then I'm not doing right um, so yeah so today's video we're gonna hop right into the TA 183 gameplay and you know hopefully you guys will give me some feedback on what you may want to see um, and I'm, I'm happy to go ahead and produce that for you so thank you for joining me and let's get right into the battle hey so now we've got the feature event and we're looking at a plane that well I know I just had a video on this last week I would think oh yeah my by Felicia video I was really trying to think why do I like this plane um, I find it relatively easy to play and I think that's why I like the plane um, as we watch the video as I play the game you know I know the things I can do in this plane and I know the things I can't do and so when I get into a situation that I can't do anything about like I'm not gonna turn with freaking zeros right oh, not that you run into zeros in this plane well, I guess if it's aircraft anyway if I can't turn with a plane guess what I'm gonna do I'm not gonna turn with the plane I'm going to use my planes capabilities and if I can't do what I want to do well I'm gonna do something else um, and I can understand where that would be frustrating if a plane isn't able to do what you want it to do but for me I find it simplistic I know what this plane can do it is very good at taking down high hit point aircraft it's very good at taking down heavies bombers even ground pounders um, and I mean it's probably one of the best things in the game for doing that maybe not the ground pounders and bombers but it's on par with a lot of the heavies out there and this can kill all those heavies and right now with the meta being a lot of heavies um, a lot of speed and this able to not necessarily keep up but at least be impactful you've got your 430s the knockout engines, knockout wings, uh, cause all kinds of hell. Um, and so you'll notice I'm flying through a bunch of planes here. I'm going at 550 miles an hour. I know what I need to do. And I focus on that rather than... Uh, at the time, I remember that at the time, I thought he was just going to burn out. And then I realized uh, he hasn't died yet. So I could have just got myself into some serious trouble. Um, luckily... He didn't know or see me. Although he wasn't very happy about it, so it is what it is. Um, anyway, you'll notice this gameplay um, and how I always play the TA-183 and basically the F-6U as well. I turn when I feel like I can get away with turning. If I don't think I can get away with it, I'm just going to keep on moving. And when you've got a plane that has this kind of speed, um, my first preference is to not turn, which is very counterintuitive sometimes, um, especially for somebody like myself who kind of um, sharpened my teeth on the light fighters. Um, this is a light fighter, but not I don't play it like a light fighter. I play it like a heavy. Think of this plane as a heavy, and you will succeed. Um, I thought I was going to be catching up to this bomber, and I clearly wasn't, so I was getting my butt handed to me. And so uh, do a little dive move here, get some speed back up, got my boost back up, and I'm boosting over to where he's at. And hopefully I'll come in and get closer to where my guns are more consistent. And you can see just, well, look at that. I overheated my guns, but I took out half his health. And if I didn't overheat him again, I would have taken out a, there we go. Um, play this plane like you would a heavy. If heavies are the meta right now, then play this like you're playing all those freaking heavies. Play this like you play an HG2, like you would an F2H. 
like you would a 228. Um, you will succeed. Um, you, th This plane really tears up those heavies because it's got the firepower, but it can actually outmaneuver all those heavies. As long as you're not trying to dogfight. Oh, wait a minute. I should be able to tear this guy up really quickly. Yeah, two thirds of his health gone. Um, as long as you're not trying to put yourself in a situation that you can't succeed in, you'll do fine. Um, and I think that's what... It's different than the TA-152, for better or for worse. And because it's different, uh, because the guns are a much shorter range, um, they're kind of doing a shotgun effect rather than a sniper effect, um, it's a different play style than the 152. But if you play the um, momentum of the plane, play it like a heavy more than you would a 152, it's not a sniper, right? It's a... it's really kind of a heavy brawler. Uh, where I think of the F6U as a heavy assassin, this is more of a heavy brawler where you get behind him and you just punch him to oblivion and then you laugh. I was really disappointed there. I thought I was going to get to this guy before they took the center. Um, we're down on points pretty significantly. Uh, I'm going to have to get my act together to um, you know, flip this game around. All right, so guns do overheat pretty quickly on this plane. Um, I tend to not be annoyed by that because if you're hitting, um, it's really not going to matter how quickly they overheat. Alright, so um, right now I'm trying to use my strong guns to tear up things that, um, you know, a heavy fighter would be going against. And you can do that as long as you're getting your guns on target. And unlike something like a 262, the tier 8 262, um, you've got a little bit more maneuverability, which means you can get these guns on target quite a bit quicker. And I think these guns are more relevant on this plane than they were on the tier 8 heavy fighter, the 262. Um, you could not play the 262 like this because it doesn't maneuver enough to get behind people, right? Um, so I actually quite enjoy this plane a lot more than I did the 262. But if you're good with a 262, you're going to be good with this plane. Um, if you can make a 262 work, this plane will seem pretty cushy. Alright, so we're running low on our hit points here. And I wasn't trying to crash into him, but unfortunately I did. So what are you going to do? <laughs> Luckily the squall line wasn't in. We've got our third section. Um, getting that... Um, Com center, and as long as we were able to hold on to that, um, eventually things would start flipping. I was definitely mindful of the mining facility and um, if we were going to be getting that or not. So at this point, I want to make sure that we have that bomber taken care of. It looks like he's going to be knocked out. Yeah, definitely. So let's go ahead and get to the center. Really, one way to think of this plane is kind of an anti-aggressor. Um, it's not really a defense plane, but it is really good at taking out the enemy's attack planes. And I don't mean like ground attack planes, although it is good at that. But I just mean, you know, they're they're heavy hitters. Oh, there's a ME109, uh, definitely a heavy hitter, right? Got really good guns. So let's go ahead and stick with him. I'm using my boost right now so I can stay with him. Um, it's twofold, right? I'm staying with him and I'm also pulling away from his allies. Um, so pushing him into the wrong direction. Let's see if we can get our guns on target here. And finally, so that's where the uh, poor maneuverability kind of rears its ugly head. Um, but we're up three sectors to two. And for the first time in quite a while, I feel like we've got this game under control, although the mining facility could be flipped. Uh, so what I want to do is get the center part here taken care of. And that way, um, if I need to heal up or anything like that, I can do that. 
trying to turn but but again you'll notice I'm not turning so much to where I'm dogfighting I'm turning to the next available target and I'm not trying to turn 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 you saw there I, I had the opportunity to um, really kind of turn in circles and I knew it wasn't the right thing to do so we've got this guy who's bleeding energy energy <laughs> and we want to get these guns on target and knock him out. Key can be a dangerous plane if he got behind us. Doesn't matter if he's dead though. And at this point the game's really over. Like really, really. Awesome. So we were able to turn this game around. I uh, get 17,000 personal points and McCampbell's. Uh, yeah. So let's head on back. Weekend. Okay, 15 frags, 480 capture points, uh, pretty well led the team there. Um, they had some strong representation on the opposite side. Didn't really run into that multi-roll very much, did I? Um, but being in this plane, I know that you can take down those plates. Um, you know, as long as you put yourself in position. It was a close battle at the end there, uh, but a fun battle. And I really felt like there wasn't a lot of situations where I was out of control. And, you know, I like planes that I feel like I can dictate the battle. Um, so, yeah, we got the FW252. Uh, I'm not necessarily looking forward to that. I mean, I've got a Swift, and I really like the Swift. But I'm really enjoying this plane. Um, and having a lot of fun. I like the playstyle of it, although it's not necessarily my favorite plane. Um, in my opinion, I think it's a keeper. I think it's unique enough and it's fun enough for me to hang on to. So let's take a look here at some of the other planes that have similarities to the TA-183. The old Huckabeen. It's not a bean, it's a bine. Huckabine? Anyway. I'm sure that's not even close to how it's pronounced. <laughs> so here we've got our high altitude fighters at tier nine. Um, technically, the key um, could be considered high altitude. Um, and the attacker's not really. It's still kind of progressing from the Spitfire. So we can take a look here at our turn times. Um, the TA-183 isn't really that good. Um, it's better than the F6U, uh, but not by much. And it's outdone by the ME and by the MIG. Um, so what about airspeed? Well, we've got pretty good airspeed with this plane. And you know it's gonna be better than um, some of the planes here. It's gonna be it's gonna be good. Um, I you see how much I use that speed and unlike the the MIG or the 1092, you're really not turning at all. Um, very rarely was I, you know, stick, sticking on somebody. I was only sticking with people that I knew I could stick with. If that makes sense. Um, if there was any chance of them trying to outturn me, I just kept on moving. Um, as long as you're holding your speed, you're going to do really well in this particular plane. Um, F6U, very similar characteristics as far as play style is concerned. Big 9 and 1092, you can turn a little bit more, and there'll be more situations that you can try to get your guns on target. Um, here we're going to look at the altitude performance, and you know, the Big 9 in. It's known as one of the high altitude fighters, like it's got great altitude. Uh, but the 183 is right in line there, isn't it? Um, same with the 1092. There's not a whole lot of separation here. And you know, so, so don't think of the 183 as something that's a mid-altitude fighter. It's going to be able to really go up high as you need. Now the biggest difference um, you might see here is the guns. Although the guns on the 183 are rated um, just as high, actually higher than everything else here, 
I wouldn't necessarily do that. Uh, they've got the same damage per second as the 1092 and only slightly more than the F6U, which they all have more than the MiG-9 because the MiG-9 only has three guns. Um, the difference is the 183 has much shorter range and that short range can make a huge difference when you're playing the gun, the plane. Um, but it hits really well once you get them on target. Um, side note, I'm kind of surprised the F6U, you know, it's got basically the same guns as the 1092. But anyway, um, so here's the 183 again. Um, as I mentioned before, um, an awesome plane. So I hope you enjoyed this. Give me some ideas, guys. I'm totally down for playing any of the planes I've got in my garage. Um, and I will be. Don't worry about that. But if there's something that you really want to see, I want you to tell me about that. Um, I'm happy to hop into the plane. If I've kept it, I've kept it for a reason. Um, tell me if there's something you want to see a review on. And I'll be happy to, to slot it in. Otherwise, I'm just going to play everything I have so much fun with. Anyway. Um, I have some dailies to get done. So I appreciate you guys hanging out with me. Have a great day.